In a puzzle game, you want to define the layout of your level in data and have the scene assembled for you. In this example, we place bubbles along a herringbone-shaped hex grid. One line of code is enough to convert a bubble's array index to the world coordinates of the game object. Here's our setup. We have a game object called Level Assembler. It has a script, also called Level Assembler. We have a bunch of prefabs. And if you take a look at the script, the level itself is simply described as an array of characters, red, green and blue, which correspond to the different blocks. And what we are doing is we are looping through this array and using the row and column as the position where we want to spawn our game object. If we hit play, this is not what we want to actually happen. These blocks are arranged according to their position in the array, but we want to align them along the grid. So let's fix this. We need to add a grid to the level assembler, component, grid framework, and I'm going to add a hexagonal grid using the rectangular shape. These renderer settings are not really important, we only use them for, as a visual aid in this example. I could also just remove the renderer completely. Now let's head back to the code. As usual, we first need to import our namespace. It's grid framework dot grids, and we need a reference to our grid. The class is hex grid, and the name will be simply grid. We also need a reference, which I will assign in the await function. Grid is get component of type hex grid. Now we can assign our position. We'll wrap this vector in a coordinate conversion. And the coordinate system I'm going to use is herring up to world. So herring up means we have this herringbone pattern, and up means uh, every second, every odd column is shifted upwards. And that's it, we are done with the code, and we can now try it out. Let's try it out, hit play, and we get almost what we wanted. Now as you can see, we are iterating through the array in this order and we are building the level in this order. But what I would prefer would be if the order of blocks matched the, um, the shape of the array. So there are two ways we can fix this. One would be to take the level assembler and rotate it 180 degrees. And now we get exactly what we wanted. Or, if we cannot afford any rotation, we can also take this row variable and add a minus in front of it. And now we get exactly the same thing, without having to rotate our grid. Whichever you prefer is completely up to you. While we are already here, I am going to show you how you can have the size of the renderer match the array automatically. Get back to the code, and the first thing we need to do is put our namespace, grid framework, dot renderers dot hexagon. And now we can get our renderer object. Var renderer is get component of type rectangle. Okay, now we're going to set the renderer's properties. First thing we need to set is the left bound, it's zero. Same for the top. And the right is going to be the levels, length, and the second dimension minus 1. 
and finally the bottom is going to be almost the same. We need a minus here, and here we need a plus because we are going into the negative range, meaning we do it upside down. Hit save. Oh wait, this has to be zero. Okay, save now and try it out. And there we go. Thank you for watching. If you want to know more about Greek Framework, please visit my website or the Stop page. If you have questions or suggestions, feel free to drop me a line. As always, all links are in the video description.